Hey, there we are. It's me, John Park. I've got an echo. Now my echo is gone. Hello, everyone, and welcome to John Park's workshop. Here we are. It's Thursday. It is the time for us to do this. Uh, I want to say, first of all, that I was digging through some stuff and found my Hackaday swag bag from Super Conference. So I've got both a uh, water bottle and a Hackaday Supercon t-shirt on today that were like surprise gifts to me because I forgot I had them. Uh, this is, this is what Marie Kondo is doing to everyone that I know. <laughs> so we're all going through and getting rid of stuff and folding things. Uh, I need to work on the folding things part. So uh, let me see. What have we got going on over here? We've got some people in Discord. Hello, everybody. Hey, all the things Andy Calloway, Matambale, and C. Grover, Mr. Certainly. Welcome. And hello, everyone over in YouTube. Uh, we've got Liz Myers from Munich saying hello, hello, hello. Uh, Yanni, hello Yanni. Uh, so many people. Hello from Portugal. We've got quite an international audience here today. Uh, let me drop that level a little bit because apparently C. Grover uh, noticed that my vocal level was clipping a bit. So I'll, uh, I'm going to cough. <coughs> That'll really throw it off. I'll, yeah, I'll say that that level is pretty good. Not too clippy, I hope. Uh, so let's, uh, Let's get going with this thing. What have we got going on today here? Uh, first of all, let's get a couple of little administrative things out of the way. We've got our jobs.adafruit.com jobs board that you might want to check out if you're looking to hire someone or if you are looking for a job. It's a free jobs board and it allows you to uh, upload your info, your resume and other info if you're looking for work. If you're a company looking to hire someone, you can post job postings there and it is entirely free. How about that, huh? So go check it out. Uh, let's see. The next thing I want to talk about is our coupon code for the day. The coupon code, coupon code is Rocket Car. So if you want to go buy some cool stuff on Adafruit, put it in your cart, as long as it's not software, subscription, gift certificate, and you'll get 10% off using Rocket Car. Hello, Kinger North. Welcome. Hey, FX Music. So if you're over in the Discord chat, uh, we got some very awesome people over there hanging out today, and I want to put another plug in for FX Music, if I'm saying that properly. FX Music is over in Germany making some really cool music uh, using some synthesizers and uh, desktop synth gear and the Trellis M4. Uh, so go check it out on, on uh, Discord, and then probably you'll find FX Music on YouTube, too. Maybe you want to put a link there. Uh, yeah, so Rocket Car, that's our coupon code. I got distracted. Coupon code for the day, and that'll get you 10% off in the store. And uh, what, uh, what better way to segue into the product of the week than that? Uh, because the product of the week is the Metro M4 Grand Central. We just made a really tiny batch of these. They sold out super quick, uh, but we're about to start making a whole bunch more if we're not making them already. This is the board right here. This is ginormous, uh, and it's got the most beautiful silk screen on a board I've seen ever. Uh, it's themed for the Grand Central Station in New York City, and it's got a ceiling constellation artwork from uh, something that's in Grand Central Station. 
So this, if you're not familiar with it, is a brand spanking new board that runs Circuit Python faster than any other board. Uh, it's running at 120 megahertz, which is whopping fast for one of these guys. And uh, it has uh, essentially the form factor of an Arduino Mega. Uh, I bet I've got one here somewhere. Where'd my Mega go? Here's my Mega. Here's a Mega. 2560, is that right? Is that the chip it was on? So there's the Mega. Uh, has not been updated in a while. I think as uh, Lamore was saying last night on Ask an Engineer, there was the Due, which didn't quite get up off the ground. But if you're looking for this form factor of board, we've now got this Grand Central. And one of the, if not the key reasons to use a board like this is massive, massive, massive amounts of I.O. So I'm going to do a project with this for next week. Um, I'm not going to say much more than, than that, other than that it's going to use a bunch of I.O. And I'm excited about that. Without having to use I.O. expanders, you can plug in bazillions of analog and digital inputs and outputs. So that's the product of the week. Go check it out. And if you are interested in getting one, sign up uh, to be notified. Again, we're really sorry we only made 50 with the first round, so a lot of people didn't get uh, notifications. It was, I think, just the first 50 in the, in the uh, order. But we will have, as Lady Ada said, hundreds and thousands more of them coming. So go sign up and you'll get an email alert uh, when it is ready. So I think that's a great time to segue into a little thing I like to call the Make Code Minute. So for today's Make Code Minute, what I want to talk about is using the switch built onto the Circuit Playground Express to switch the direction that our NeoPixels are going to move when we press the button. Uh, so you can see here in my Make Code session, what I have is on start, I'm setting the pixel color at pixel zero, that's the very first one in the upper left corner there of the board, uh, to red. And then I am creating two variables called my position and the direction. So my position is set to zero. That's going to be used for the zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine NeoPixels. And direction is going either counterclockwise or clockwise when it's set to negative one. And you'll see how this works here in a second. Uh, when I press the button B, I just chose the one on the right for fun. When I press the button B on the Circuit Playground Express, it's going to do these things. It's going to set all of the pixels to black, which essentially turns all pixels off. It's a way to clear this, the, uh, the board. Then we're going to uh, change that position that the uh, pixel is on the board, that variable my position, by a value of either 1, which means it'll go in this counterclockwise direction, or negative 1, which will go clockwise. Then we set the pixel color at that position, which started out at 0, but now it's going to be 1 if we add 1 to it to red. So let me show you that first. Let me take a look at my screen so I see what's happening. So what happened? Oh, I'm in the wrong direction. Come back. Okay, so when I press the button, it's going to advance one in this direction. And now, looking back at my code, when I move the switch to the left, it changes that direction variable to negative one. When I move the switch that's built onto the board to the right, it sets the direction to 1. So watch this. It's headed here towards the right. When I flip this switch, now we're subtracting 1 from that position variable every time we press the button. So it's a nice, easy way to change the direction of that NeoPixel with the switch that's built right onto the Circuit Playground Express inside of Make Code. And that is your Make Code Minute. All right, let's get this giant Circuit Playground Express out of the way, and uh, we can talk about the project of the week. So uh, I am really excited about this project. So first of all, I want to give a huge shout out to Microsoft and to AT Makers. Bill Binko at AT Makers is a uh, uh, familiar face to a lot of you here at Adafruit. And uh, the reason is, what I'm going to talk about today is this, which is 
the adaptive controller from Microsoft. It's sometimes called the Xbox adaptive controller or XAC. Uh, it is a game controller uh, designed to interface with Windows 10 and the Xbox One or variants of the Xbox One out of the box. You can get it to work with other consoles if you uh, add dongles. I've seen people getting to work with Switch and PS4. Uh, I'm not sure about earlier versions of Windows or Mac or Raspberry Pi, but it's probably possible. That's my guess. Um, so the Xbox Adaptive Controller, what it is, is it is a wireless controller for the Xbox that essentially just has a few buttons built on. So there's a really large A and B button and it has a D-pad and then it has a few of the administrative uh, buttons for getting up to the Xbox menu and um, uh, switching between some preset profiles on it and a couple other things. But the big deal about it is if you look on the back here, it has a whole ton of uh, input ports for connecting other types of switches. So uh, this is designed for gamers who have uh, needs that aren't met by the standard game controller, which is small and intended to be used with a couple of thumbs and, and your fingers. So for people who aren't able to use that type of controller for various reasons, uh, the uh, Xbox Adaptive Controller allows you to plug in assistive technology devices. And these can be anything from big buttons to very um, light force switches, low force switches that you can press, to joysticks that are much larger than the little thumbsticks, uh, to more exotic esoteric devices that are out there. And it's really impressive that uh, Microsoft was able to put this together uh, for the price. It's $100, which is actually, uh, I would say, pretty low considering all the things it does and what's packed into there. So they're, they're keeping this price, uh, I think, very, very low, especially when you look at assistive technology devices in general, where a single button can run you $100. Um, and I'm not saying those aren't amazing buttons, but to get this, which can act as a hub for a whole bunch of other peripherals, which I'm going to show you how to build them from some pretty inexpensive parts that we that we have in the Adafruit store. Um, it really is quite impressive. Um, and another thing I want to mention is that a lot of, this is from talking with Bill Binko in particular, a lot of what uh, he does when he works with people who have assistive technology needs is, is they'll start up a conversation about what particular switch they can or can't use on the normal Xbox uh, controller, the small controller, and then there might just be one or two things that they need that are very particular. So mounting a large button on a headrest that they can press with their head, for example, might be the type of thing you're trying to solve. So what I'd like to do today is uh, show you how to take sort of everyday buttons and switches and arcade uh, joysticks uh, as well as some analog devices, potentiometers in this case, joysticks that use potentiometers, and uh, adapt them to work with the adaptive controller. So let me head over uh, to the workbench here and we'll set up a top-down bench cam. So what I've got set up here today is I dragged in a big uh, monitor, a TV, into the workshop so that I can run the Xbox there. So there's a Xbox set up here, and this is a standard Xbox controller, which I'm gonna start up. And what I've got running on here is a game Rocket League. And I've got it in training mode, so there's no time limits or stress or anything, but it's a, a good way to demo things. So for example, on the um, standard controller here, I'll place this in camera view, uh, I can change my camera view with the right thumbstick and when I'm driving, whoops, that's not driving. When I'm driving, I can steer with this left joystick. Um, you can see the types of buttons that you'll use in this game include this jump that I did a second ago, uh, a sort of rocket thrust by pressing B, uh, Y will turn on camera, snap to the ball, or go in front of you. Um, and this trigger here is gas, this trigger is brakes and reverse. So some or all of those could be things that you want to adapt to controllers. Um, now what you'll see, let me switch over to uh, this bench view and um, I'll show you what I've got plugged into here and then how they're set up. So uh, to start with, I've got the classic gigantic red button. 
Okay, and if you can um, see in the background here in the small view, what do I have that hooked up to right now? Do I have that hooked up to anything? Oh, this isn't on. Let me turn on this control. Um, so by the way, the uh, Xbox, if you're setting this up, has what's called, um, what the heck's it called? There's a mode where you can use two controllers at once, and someone's going to remind me in the chat what that's called. In fact, let me turn on my chat over here. Um, Copilot mode, right? Yeah. And uh, in Copilot mode, I can use uh, the two as if they were one joystick. Okay, so now when I press this big red button, you'll see my car is jumping there in the background. I can put that big for a second. Okay. So every time I press that red button, I'm getting the effect of uh, the A button on the controller. And you can appreciate the difference in size. Uh, this could be much easier to hit with different body parts uh, versus this little controller, which you'd be hard pressed to hit that with anything other than um, something small like a finger. So let's uh, go back to the overhead view and I'll show you how this is put together. So uh, first of all, starting at the, uh, I'm gonna zoom in here for, a moment. So starting with the controller, first of all, it's got three screw uh, mounts on the back, threaded mounts for hooking up to, in this case, I've got it hooked up to a threading for a camera tripod um, that's on a Manfrotto Magic Arm. And that makes it really easy to hook up to um, a wheelchair, a desk, something stable, a bedpost, whatever you have uh, to hold this rather than just setting it on a desk. Um, so now looking at the back here, uh, this big button is running into a port right here. I'll tip that even more and I'll take that out. This is a pretty standard three and a half millimeter or one eighth inch uh, phono style jack. So it's a tip ring and sleeve which you find in stereo inputs and outputs for headphones and that type of thing. And so the cable that I'm using is just a stereo 3.5 millimeter cable. Um, and now I've been, as I've been working on this, I created my own little cheat sheet because I always forget these things. So uh, this type of cable in sort of stereo uh, world would be called uh, tip ring and sleeve. And these would be the left channel of some stereo audio, the right channel, and then the ground on sleeve. Uh, for the Xbox adaptive controller on a lot of these inputs that are purely digital, uh, what they're really expecting is a normally open contact at the tip and then ground at the sleeve and uh, if you have a ring, if it's, if it's not a mono cable, that can also be grounded or not. You can leave it open on the Xbox. Uh, Bill Binko asked me to say, you should connect sleeve and, uh, or sorry, ring and sleeve together. These two, if you're building devices that might get used with things other than the Xbox controller where the positioning of the contact could be a problem if you leave that one dangling open. So with that in mind, Let's have a look at uh, the big button here. So what I've got is just a cardboard box that I've stuffed it into. Uh, and then I have a TRS adapter. This is a, um, you can get this in the Adafruit store. It's a, a stereo 3.5 millimeter input on this side. Let's take that out of there. And then on this end, we have some screw terminals, which make it very easy to connect up here. Now, I'll say what I'm showing here mostly today are uh, non-soldering methods that are very easy to put together. Ideally, you will uh, use soldered methods for things that you want to stay together that could get tugged on. In this case, uh, with a little strain relief, it probably isn't a problem, but sometimes these can slip loose. So um, just be warned about that. So I've adapted that. Now, let me show you how that's connected to the button by making a new button. So let's do a button from scratch. So uh, that takes care of the basic idea of it is that for the digital inputs on here, which are most of the buttons, uh, you can see they are mapped the same as pretty much everything we have on the controller. So looking across here, I've got X and Y, A and B, uh, the click of the right thumbstick is right here, the right trigger is here, the right, uh, rather the right bumper, right trigger, left trigger, uh, this is the menu screen, and so on. These are special, I'll come to these in a second. Uh, then we also got the D-pads over here. Um, so let's assign something to reverse, for example. So if I wanna go in reverse on uh, the game, right now I'll press this left trigger and it'll run backwards. So left trigger right here, I don't have anything plugged into it. 
So let's adapt this blue switch here. So what I'll use are these uh, spade lug terminal connectors that we have. And there's a few different sizes of them depending on uh, the type of button that you're trying to connect up. This is the big honking ones here. So I'm gonna take these out. These are called what? Arcade button wire, pair, clips, 10 pieces. Um, this is the large size. And so what I can do, oh, let me, let me give you the bench cam here. So what I can do is just simply clip these onto the two uh, common and normally open connections on the button. And then on this side, these come with this little JST connector. And what you can do is you can cut and strip those, or you can even just press down uh, the metal contacts with a tiny screwdriver and pull this cap off. So let me do that. I'm going to move this out of the way for a second and zoom in even closer. We'll see if it focuses. There we are. It does not want to focus. There's too much in the way. Let me get those wires out of there. Uh, so all I'm doing is bending in the crimp connectors just a little bit and then the plastic should slip off of there. So I've pulled out one wire. This one needs a little more persuasion. Get out of there. There we go. Uh, and the reason I like doing this, again, is if you're trying to make this very easy, if you're doing, a, let's say, a workshop for people who aren't soldering and you want to put these together, uh, what we have now is actually a very nice little crimp connection that you can put into the screw terminal and uh, crank the screw down on it, and it's in there quite securely, and it has a nice electrical connection. Um, so what I'm going to do is take one of these female uh, connectors, and again, sorry, Bill, I'm not doing the uh, ground to right, which I should here, but I'll, do, I'll show how to do that in the guide. Um, but since this is just a ground and sleeve connection, it actually, honestly doesn't matter which wire goes where, because all we're doing is um, making that connection. We're grounding that uh, high pin inside of the... Microsoft Adaptive Controller. Okay, so I'm just going to unscrew those terminals a little more than they were, and then these fit in here really nice and neatly. Ta-da! And then, whoops, sorry, and then we'll screw that down a little tighter. And so what this is giving me is a female stereo 3.5 TRS connection, so you can take any uh, cable that you've got. So here's a nice long one. So I've got to zoom out of here just a little bit for you. Uh, so I've got a big, nice, long stereo cable, and I'm going to connect that to this button, and then I can plug that into left trigger. Get a good connection in there, and now let me switch uh, camera views over to where you can see the car, and when I press this button, he's now going backwards. Uh, and then I'll show you forward in a second because it's kind of cool, but for right now, I'll just use the trigger on here. So there we go. If, uh, you know, perhaps a gamer has use of one hand and they're taking care of some things with their right hand here, but they want to use a different um, limb uh, to press down on the reverse button, which is also your brakes, then there you go. You can adapt that. And for Mounting this, I'm not going to go into much about mounting, but you're going to want something more secure probably than a cardboard box. I have this set up to where it can just kind of slip into here along with my big red button. Oh, I'm not showing you that view. Sorry about that. Hey, bench view. Uh, so wires would be fed in more nicely, but now we've got a couple of buttons that'll give us jumping and uh, going in reverse right here in this little box. So let's see. I'm just going to pop open my chat here for a second so, so that I can see. Hey, let's see. I'm just going to pop open my and get the, the loop of heck <laughs> of me talking to me. Um, yeah, TWS Matt, interested in a non-solder wire with a secure connection. That is a pretty decent uh, solution there. So these spade terminals go right on uh, if you get the right size of them and they'll go on to uh, these sort of standard arcade buttons, which again, that's, you know, maybe twice as big as the button on the controller, so that could be helpful for someone. And you'll see it's got um, connections here that you can use with our smaller sized wires, which are these ones. So these terminals just clip onto there and same sort of thing. You can 
cut and strip or just remove the plastic end and feed those into uh, the little connections. If you want to get fancier, let me go to the bench view for a second. If you want to get fancier, you can uh, solder on these more permanent types of connectors. Actually, that's a TRRS one. I don't know where my non-TRRS one is. Uh, but yeah, you'll get the idea. So with these, uh, here's some, you can, uh, I got a few of them here in a little bag. You can take this end off of here and then you'll solder in the wires and uh, a little heat shrink tubing. And now you'll have a kind of more professional connection uh, there that's, that's better, it's gonna be more permanent. Now here's an interesting one, uh, I think. So here we have a uh, rugged, what do we call this, like the beefy <laughs> rugged switch. Um, so what I've got this connected to right now is the gas. So what you may find uh, is in some games you have a button that you're just pressing almost all the time. Uh, I was using, there's an underwater exploration game that I was playing with yesterday where I just wanted to be swimming forward and leave that going and not hold down a button the whole time. So this thing I've got connected to my right trigger and you'll see when I click this, it's now essentially locked the gas pedal down uh, and now I can steer, I'm just using the Microsoft controller right now, the regular controller um, to steer with back there. But you can see my car is moving until I uh, hit the off button on there. And the same sort of thing, what I've done inside of here is connect up, I'll open it up in fact. So this just unscrews and inside here you see I've connected two of the terminals across from each other. This button just connects three pairs of wires across. Uh, I've got one of our female connectors, same thing we just used, running out to again a three and a half millimeter TRS wire. Um, so that I thought was kind of an interesting um, to have a toggled switch versus a momentary switch could be helpful for some cases. And it's a big beefy rugged controller. It's got uh, some holes in it that you could mount it to, to something or more permanently screw it down to something. Um, now another really cool one is our foot switch. So this is a foot pedal and right now I've got it connected to the uh, turbo thrust. So you'll see when I tap that foot pedal, it's gonna give us a thrust on the car. If you can see that back there, I'll, I'll switch these cameras for a second. So every time I, let me zoom this out a little bit. Every time you step on that, you're gonna th get a, a thrust, which is how you jump in the game. Um, so let me, let me demo that a little better. I'm gonna put this down on the ground um, and I'll just use the controller for um, the gas right now. So I'll try to t do this looking at the screen. So if I jump and now I'm holding down thrust with the foot pedal. So I'm flying through the air with the greatest of ease and tumbling <laughs> using that foot pedal. Uh, so again, same, uh, similar sort of thing, but what I've done here is I've taken the end of our foot pedal switch, which just comes with some nice, uh, there's three wires in there that you can solder down. Uh, and I've stripped the ends off of two of those wires and just put them in again to the tip and the uh, sleeve of a male cable, which plugs into here. Um, in general, I think the female uh, adapters, which don't have to be right here up against it, are probably better. They're lower profile, and then you'll run a, a standard patch cable between the two. Uh, so one other one that I thought was uh, pretty interesting is this is a, what do I have this connected to? Is that going to go? Okay, that's going to switch my camera view. So if you look at um, the camera for a moment, right now it's looking straight ahead, and now it's looking at the ball. We can make that a little more obvious by going very far away from the ball. Uh, and so what I have here is one of these, um, I've just connected it with a helping hand, but this is a very, very low force um, limit switch. And so there's a, a long wire, you can kind of see that coming off of here, and it takes very little pressure uh, and a fairly short throw. So that could be something that you can activate just with like a little nod of your head, um, even just opening your jaw, or 
probably many, many other ways that you could use that. So that you'd probably want to mount into something nice, maybe 3D print a nice case for it. Um, that's something that AT Makers does. Um, Bill shared with me this really cool little gizmo, and I 3D printed one this morning, and this is a, uh, again, a very, very low force switch. Um, and what it's activating inside is a standard Cherry MX keyboard uh, key. So that's a key switch from a keyboard, and you can buy these in bulk pretty inexpensively. I didn't wire this one up, but I did put the keyboard in there, uh, the key in there, and you can see it's got a nice little low force action. So again, very easy to click that with minimal motion. Um, and he said when they do events, they get people learning how to 3D print and build uh, these types of devices. They, they give these out because they're a, a great little souvenir and make for an excellent little switch. Um, then we're almost out of time, but the last thing I wanted to talk about is analog. So the way the uh, Xbox adaptive controller works, there are a couple of ways to deal with joystick and thumbstick types of motion as well as analog triggers. So I'm not going to get into this yet. Uh, Bill has been working with Dan Halbert on some interesting ideas around using microcontrollers to interface with these HID joystick ports that are on the side. But right, right as this is, you can plug in sort of standard HID joysticks. I believe you could probably go get an old Thrustmaster somewhere and plug that in. Um, but the other way you can do analog is with the X1 and X2 ports, which are not ports you'd normally find on, on the joystick, uh, I think, but that is the uh, analog for left and right thumbsticks, and same with these two triggers, those can be analog as well. So if you look right now on my um, camera here, I'm just spinning the camera around using my thumbstick. So that is, I believe, X2. So what I'm gonna do is plug into X2. I have a TRRS cable. So that's what you find in things like an Android phone and an iPhone, so it's four uh, contacts. And what I've plugged into there right now is a two potentiometer analog joystick. So I got it upside down. <laughs> so here you can see, whoop, you can open it up and see. I've just taken this little joystick that we sell and it's got a pair of potentiometers on it. So the Xbox adaptive controller is reading those um, analog voltages and doing some, uh, some nice uh, sort of leveling of the dead zones and checking out the minimum and maximums to give you a really easy, I didn't have to do any adjustments to this. Uh, so I can use that for the view camera or I can use that for steering. So if I plug that in for steering and let's see, is this guy still working over here? press my gas pedal down and now I can steer with, <laughs> let me jump through the air, I can steer with this joystick which again it could be easily adapted by adding a piece of like plastic tubing to this to be much taller and therefore easier to, to move. You can move it with your um, chin if you needed to or an elbow or something. Um, so really cool that not just digital things can work in here but also analog. So um, for things like the trigger, you could use probably some uh, bend sensors or some uh, the resistors, uh, force sense resistors, for example. Uh, so that is one example of using the, the analog ports on here. Now, I ended up, I didn't have any of these, but I just got some in the mail. Uh, I think the best way to adapt to those is probably with this uh, TRRS uh, to screw terminal adapter that we have so that you can go from your uh, analog potentiometers into these four ports and then uh, for these, again checking my, my little handy cheat sheet, uh, we've got analog X direction, so that's the, the variable voltage on analog X, analog Y direction, and then we have ground is actually on the second ring and the plus 3.3 uh, volt I think reference voltage is the, the final one. So um, Microsoft, I, I spoke with um, Bryce, Bryce, I'm forgetting your last name, Bryce J, right? I spoke with Bryce uh, at Microsoft who is uh, on the team or ahead of the team uh, building this and he gave me some assistance which was really valuable. They are working on some uh, more documentation to share with the public um, but I'm gonna show at least some of these. Um, I'll make up some little diagrams of my own uh, so that you have an idea of how things are connected. So, let's see. Uh, any questions over in um, 
in the chat or comments, please let me know. I'm, I'm, as you can tell, I'm very excited about uh, this um, device as an interface for all sorts of adaptive controllers. Um, I also wanted to say that just for pure um, fun controller design, this is also a really interesting choice. I'm sure if you're like me in the past, you've done things where you've gutted a uh, regular controller and dealt with the pads in there to solder on your own external controls. In fact, the first one I, re I remember doing in, in recent memory was, um, I don't know, probably 15 years ago, I took a PlayStation controller and adapted it for a foot switch so that playing Time Crisis light gun game instead of tipping it to reload, I could just tap a button that I had a foot pedal. Um, so this, I think, would be great for anyone who's creating uh, alternate game controllers, not necessarily even for assistive technology or adaptive technology purposes, but if you've ever seen uh, events where there are punching bags that are used as game controllers or really large scale joysticks, um, this could be a really interesting choice because it's wireless uh, and it is so dang easy to connect other things to thanks to all those ports on the back. So um, I will say uh, Bill, Bill uh, Binko, AT Maker, over in our Discord chat said that he suspects this is or probably knows that this is heavily subsidized. So um, the $100 price tag on it is um, probably, they're probably not making any money selling it at that, but I think it's a, a really terrific uh, cause. Um, yeah, the, the other thing that Bill uh, asked me to mention, and Bill, anything else you want me to mention right now, please let me know in the Discord chat. So uh, the co-pilot mode is not just for how I'm using it here, but it's really valuable for when uh, a couple of players want to play together and someone uh, has certain assistive needs and maybe someone has other assistive needs or there's a sibling of someone uh, who's using some buttons that are connected to this. Someone else can be maybe doing the running and the looking while someone else is you know, shooting basketballs or, or whatever it is. Um, so it's a, a very um, uh, useful thing that I don't know if it's if it's possible on other consoles to do something like that co-pilot mode, but it's ideal for this type of a setup. Um, and another thing uh, Bill mentioned is if you are interested in um, having help building some assistive technology devices, uh, if you have some, if you have needs yourself or if you're helping someone, uh, reach out to STEM groups and local hacker spaces or makes, maker spaces, uh, high school robotics teams. Um, I know that Bill sometimes, AT Makers, does events where they'll get people together to do um, adaptive technology modifications to toys so that, for example, a teddy bear that needs to be squeezed uh, for, for someone who can't squeeze it can use an uh, a large switch on it instead, or a pair of switches. Um, so there are ways if you don't know how to work with this type of technology yourself to get things done, or if you're really uh, facile with this type of stuff, maybe consider volunteering your services. Get in touch with Bill at AT Makers, uh, and he will help you find a group in your area that is looking to run a workshop to teach people how to solder and put together these types of uh, assistive tools. So I'm sorry I've run over. Let me uh, head back over to the workstation here for a moment and see if we've got uh, any other questions or comments before we go. Um, and I'm just going to look through the Discord chat here for a second. That's not Discord. That's Adam. There's Discord. Uh, can the Xbox adaptive controller accept open collector or open drain input or just switch contacts? Bill said, wired correctly, it should be okay with a Darlington, but relays are always good. Yeah, and I think there is some mention made of that in the white paper. Um, so when Microsoft publishes more info, you can um, start interfacing microcontrollers or more complex circuits with these, which is really great. Um, Bill asked, what game am I playing on there? It is Rocket League. and. Uh, it's fantastic. It's an awesome game that I used to be a bit addicted to. I was never that great at it, but I like to play it a lot. And when you go into training mode, you can never run out of time. Uh, you have infinite thrust, and it's uh, really, I think, an excellent one for testing. I did notice that there's also a menu item where you can uh, have the Xbox Adaptive Controller just show you when you're lighting up different switches with things plugged in. So that's maybe a, a quicker way and less tempting to get sucked into playing the game. Um, all right. So I think 
that is all the questions that I see, and we're definitely out of time. So I will uh, hang out in the chat for a little longer if people want to uh, talk, if people have questions. Uh, you will not have a hard time finding this online. Just look, look, look for Microsoft um, Adaptive Controller or Xbox Adaptive Controller, and, and you can read up on it and find out more. Uh, and I will give one more mention to our coupon code, which maybe makes more sense now. Our coupon code for the day is Rocket Car. Uh, and that is, uh, that is the coupon code that will get you 10% off in the store on any items that you desire other than software subscriptions and gift certificates. And uh, yes, thank you everyone so much for, for coming out today. I am working on a guide, so I will put together uh, some of this info so that you have an idea of which things to pair up with which things and where they plug in. Um, and that, for Adafruit Industries, I'm John Park. That is all I've got. Uh, thank you for coming to John Park's workshop, and I will see you next week. Thank you so much, everybody.